If I knew then what I know now, I would have made different choices. Many times in life, if we look back at things that have happened and think to ourselves, oh my gosh, if, if I knew then what I know now, I would have made different choices. And when we look back on cybersecurity or security incidents in general, we would have made different choices to avoid the pain and suffering that the security breach or the security problem brought forth. In this video, I'd like to talk with you about mitigation and also countermeasures that we can put in place to lessen the pain and also lessen the likelihood of security incidents on our networks and on our systems. And let's start off from Webster's Dictionary here, the definition of mitigation, the action of reducing the severity, seriousness, or painfulness of something. So if we want to lessen the pain of a security incident or a security vulnerability, or put in a countermeasure to compensate for an existing vulnerability so that it cannot be exploited, one of the biggest challenges that we face is the awareness referring to the awareness of what we need to go ahead and protect or what we need to put in additional countermeasures for. Now, if it's after an attack, it might be pretty obvious, but hopefully a stitch in time saves nine. We wanna put in the controls beforehand to make our systems as secure as possible. So here are some areas that we may want to look into regarding where vulnerabilities may exist. One of those would be our applications that we use. Now they could be custom applications that we wrote in-house. We could have applications that we got from a third-party vendor. But in any case, there's going to be best practices for verifying and checking and making sure that those applications are secure, including the way they interact with back-end systems like databases. And a great resource for application layer security is OWASP, O-W-A-S-P. And if you do a search for OWASP, you'll find something like this. There's the OWASP. It stands for Open Web Application Security Project. And they have a top 10 regarding the top 10 security issues regarding applications. So if you have a staff of programmers or you're working with a team of programmers, it would be helpful to refer to OWASP and then taking a look at what those top vulnerabilities are and then take the additional steps to verify that the apps that we're creating or writing do not include or do not involve those vulnerabilities. OWASP also has created a virtual machine. It's called the OWASP Broken Web Apps Virtual Machine. <laughs> and it's loaded with vulnerabilities as a training tool. And it's a great tool to both identify and then practice working with apps that have vulnerabilities so we can avoid those same mistakes in our environments. And here's an example of the OWASP Broken Web Application Virtual Machine. And if we wanted to learn more about a vulnerability and how it worked, we could go to one of the vulnerabilities that's listed. Here's a SQL injection. Here's one that's gonna do bypass authentication for login. If we click on help me here, it has information regarding the hacks. If we click on hints here, and then click on SQL injection, it has information on how the attack could be leveraged, why it works. In this case, if somebody puts this string right here in the password field, it will allow the user to log in without having to supply the admin password. So we copy that. And then we go back to the login page right here, and I'll scroll down a little bit for please sign in. We'll log in as admin. And then I'm just gonna right click and paste in that string, click on login. And this is an example of a SQL injection attack bypassing login authentication. So up here it indicates that, yep, I'm logged in as admin. So a significant area we'd wanna look at when looking for vulnerabilities and weaknesses would be in our applications. Another area we'd want to check is our network infrastructure. And that would include things like our switches and routers and firewalls and access points and controllers and all the other bells and whistles that make our networks function. If those devices are not configured securely or if they're not following best practices, those are also opportunities for vulnerabilities on those systems. And here's one example of a network infrastructure vulnerability and it's regarding ARP messages. If you have PCs that are connected on a switch and one does an ARP message saying, hey, what's your layer two address? And somebody else responds back and he puts it in his cache and uses it. How do we know that that layer two address is correct? How do we know we don't have a device that's spoofing or lying about their layer two address? We also have spoofing that can happen at layer three. So those would be some examples of vulnerabilities, potential vulnerabilities that exist in a switched environment that we'd first of all want to be aware of. And then secondly, if it's important to us, we'd want to put in a countermeasure or a control that can protect against devices lying about their layer two or layer three addresses. So we'd want to follow best practices in the initial deployment and management of our network devices, including security features that address things like 
people lying about their layer 2 addresses. And a feature that does that is DAI on a Cisco switch, which is an acronym for Dynamic ARP Inspection, making sure that clients and devices are not lying about their layer 2 addresses. Another big area that we want to have the appropriate countermeasures and mitigation set up for are the humans. Because humans, unfortunately, are often the weakest link in security programs at companies. Because users log into systems, users talk to other people, and there's a potential for a human to be tricked with social engineering or compromised with blackmail or have other motives for doing things that are not in the best interest of the security and safety of the data and systems at the company network. And to help shore up the human aspect of it, we'd want to have appropriate training that in educates the users as far as what to look out for, why it's important, what their responsibility is, make sure they sign an AUP, it's an acceptable use policy, make sure they understand it and that it's updated and signed every single year. And the big part also is testing. And here's the critical thing about testing our users regarding data security and system security. Do we want a user like Bob or Lois, do we want them to be able to go down a list of questions and check the right boxes? Or do we really want them to be aware all the time and if they see something, say something to prevent fraud or to prevent an attack or a compromise of the system? The answer is we want it to really work. We want the system to be secure. So one of the best ways after we've had appropriate user training and a lot of love and cooperation between the users and everyone else is we want to test it occasionally. For example, if we did a little workshop and we made it fun about phishing attacks and how to identify a phishing attack and they, they really got into it, they were collaborating, it would be great if we told them, hey, in the next 30 days, um, there's going to be a few of you, not all of you, that are going to get at least one email that is literally a phishing attack. And we want you to be able to identify it and then report it using the reporting method you've set up. It's beautiful because every email they're going to get, they're going to look for it and they're going to be more aware and conscious that this could be a phishing attack that could compromise the security of their system and their user account and everything else. And also, it'd be a good idea if we told them that, it would also be a good idea to actually do it <laughs> to make sure we're not just talking a talk, but we're actually implementing some testing and reinforcing their behavior. And then when they, when they see that phishing attack and they recognize it, that it's not legit and they report it in the correct way, we want to have a freaking party. We want to just tell them, amazing job, you got it, way to go, we appreciate you because it's, it's important. And there will be times when there's risk that's been identified, which is the, the probability of a vulnerability being exploited where management is going to make a decision, okay, uh, we're going to accept that risk. Uh, we realize it could happen, but it's not going to be devastating. They just accept it or they put in the appropriate countermeasure. So they're going to be spending some more time, effort, and money in a countermeasure that's going to make the exploit against the vulnerability not that effective. And that would be an example of how they can address the risk. They can accept it or they can put steps in place to reduce the risk by reducing the likelihood of a successful exploit against the vulnerabilities that they've identified. So thanks for joining me in this video regarding countermeasures and mitigations, and I'll see you in the next one. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.